Hello pilots and welcome back to another episode of Flying DCS World with Overkill AV-8B Harrier. And today we are going to be taking a look at how to fire the AGM-65 Gulf or Foxtrot uh, infrared or TV guided missiles. Alright, and uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be showing you guys three different methods of employment. One, the most simplest, which is using just the camera in the Maverick to acquire and uh, employ on our targets. Two, we'll be using the DMT, so the little no, the little camera in the nose of the aircraft. And then three, we'll be using the targeting pod. Um, now, <clears throat> there will be chapters in the description down below, so whichever one applies to you and what you're looking for, please feel free to skip ahead. Um, as we all know, the AGM-65 is an air-to-ground mi uh, missile. And so let's go ahead and see how to use it. First thing we're going to want to do is obviously go into air to ground mode, make sure our master arm is set, navigate over to our stores page, and you want to select your IRMV or IR Maverick. Now, this one says ready already because we did an air start of the aircraft. However, if you started from the ground, this takes about a three minutes uh, of cooldown time before the Maverick becomes available. So you make sure that you guys watch for that. If it says standby, the mi missile is not ready to be used come up over here to the fusing options and we're going to go ahead and select instant. You have instant and delay one and delay two for bunker or hardened uh, targets penetration. But uh, we're just going to be taking out some trucks down out here. Alright, so let's go ahead and execute on our target. Go ahead and set our waypoint over to our target area. Now to bring the TV screen up for the Maverick, we just have to hit our cage or uncage button. You can see the TV comes alive. We're going to go ahead and increase our field of view down to the narrow as we're coming in pretty close. The Maverick will typically acquire between 7.5 and, and uh, 8 nautical miles depending on conditions. Now notice that up here it says INS. At that point the Maverick will not acquire the target. We need to make sure this says IRMV. So I'm going to hit our sensor select forward button. And you can see now it says infrared maverick indicating that the slew controls are set to the maverick and the maverick is set to acquire a target so let's go ahead and start pitching down now it's more or less on the bore site and we can sort of see our target area out there so we're just going to start slewing the maverick forgive the awkward slew controls my uh, controls are a little screwy right now start slowing this bird down that's why we're shaking and just like before, we have the Maverick's camera angle and relativity to the bore site. While we can our distance, we're still about 9.8 away from the target, so I'm not going to try to start locking just yet. Coming up on 8. And there, that's a target acquisition there. You can see the gates have closed around the target, so rifle with our weapons release button. Missiles away. We can now break off and defend if we need to or get down low or exit the battle area. This is a safe area for us so we're not too worried about that. We can go ahead and do a... oops. Helps if I hit the right button. And let's go ahead and watch our missile come in. And there's a shack. Now we'll go ahead and do one more reattack. So you guys can see the process and repeat. Now you're going to have to trim out. The uh, Harrier is already a pretty unstable aircraft uh, when it comes to. Uh, definitely doesn't like uh, asymmetric weight. So having more weight on one wing than the other. But let's go ahead and repeat the process. So, first thing we're going to do is uncage the missile. Once again, you can see we're in INS by looking in the top left of the Maverick screen. We don't want that, so we're going to hit sensor select forward. We're now set to IRMV, so we're ready to employ the Maverick. Alright, let's go ahead and come around again. And just like before, we're going to want to be ready to re 
reset our target. Now this is going to happen pretty fast because we're in pretty close. So let's go ahead and first thing we're going to do is sort of just get it onto the target area. Then I'm going to move my TDC. Our target is locked. The gates are closed. Rifle. Missile away. Alright. Trim the aircraft back out. And we can do a shift pause again. And watch our missile come into play. And there's another shag. Boom. That is a dead truck. Alright, so now let's go ahead and see the same process, but we'll use the DMT camera to acquire our target. Alright, so we're back in the aircraft again. Here we go. Air to ground mode, master arm on, set our stores page, find the Maverick, make sure it's cooled. We see it ready, so that's good. Set our fusing, we want instant, we're not doing any kind of penetration. Now the only difference is this time, we're going to hit sensor select aft, which should bring up our DMT. So right now it's in laser search track, so I'm going to press sensor select aft again. And now we have our TV camera. And again, this is the DMT. When you first load to the screen, it's following the flight vec uh, flight path of the aircraft. So the camera is literally pointing right in the center of our flight path indicator. Let me get the RWR turned off. We don't need it today. All right, and then let's set our target waypoint. So we're going to go to waypoint three. I'm going to come off the autopilot. Start steering us towards our target. Again, gently bringing the nose into it, especially with as far out as we want. We don't want to miss our target. There's our target area. Now, all I did to do that was I simply just moved the slew. Okay, so I moved my TDC. And you can see we get a square box around the target area. Okay, so from here, now I can manipulate. Now remember, the DMT does not have anywhere close to the field of view and the gimbal limits that the TGP has. So right about the time that you start coming across the 60 degree line or so, um, you're going to start losing functionality of the DMT to maintain your target. So you've got to work pretty quick here. All right, so unpausing. Now I'm going to get us onto a target here. Relatively close. There we, that's close enough. All right, now I'm just going to come over and I'm hit my cage uncage button. And you can see my Maverick is already in the same area as our um, DMT. So now it's the same game. Now look at the Maverick screen. You can see it says TV. We don't want TV. So we're going to go forward. And now we have our sensor select forward. You can see we have the IRMV again in the Maverick display. So now it's just a matter of waiting until we get target acquisition. We're still 12 and a half out, so we're a ways away yet. I'm going to go ahead and stop descending speed up time a bit and there we go looking about eight now we're slightly off on the target so we can move our there we go gates are closed rifle we're right out of there now that the maverick has been fired you can see we can now manipulate the dmt again and let's do an active pause and it's always fun to see our missile come in but we can speed up time just a little bit. <laughs> I had to laugh. One of my videos, somebody said I sound like Bob Ross, and now I catch myself doing it all the time. So thank you for that, sir, because <laughs> now I'm just like super conscious about it. Just a happy little Maverick flying down to its target. Oh, give it a little friend. All right. The funny thing about that is I do oil paintings on the side. Um... So that made me giggle even more. And I haven't watched anything from Bob Ross in years. Um, as a little boy, I used to watch it when my dad was... My dad used to paint, or still paints a lot. He does amazing stuff, amazing stuff. He's uh, did a crashed P-51 Mustang with the pilot sort of sitting on a... Uh, um, what you may call it, like a log, you know? Sort of kneeling, you know, sitting down with a, resting his head on his fist and then um, and I'm just extending out for a second guys and then right now he's working on a uh, painting of a P-38 which is probably my favorite play in World War II. I know it wasn't the most efficient in comparison to some of the others uh, but fast. Man it was fast but uh, anyway he does amazing work and so I remember when I was growing up I used to watch he would watch Bob Ross quite a bit 
And um, I used to always watch him as a kid. Oh, yeah, over pulling her. She's not an F-18, that's for sure. I should have just viffed her around, but I didn't think about it until it was too late. All right, so we're going to come back on. Now, to get our DMT to center again, we're just going to hit our undesignate button. So your nose wheel steering button. And you can see the DMT is now caged back to the nose. So just rinse and repeat here, guys. So we're going to sort of slow down a little bit. We're in pretty close already. Gently get our DMT over target area. Boom, we've acquired. Let's go ahead and try to grab this first guy. Don't have to be perfect. It's close enough. Uncage the Maverick with our Cage Uncage button. Maverick's already on the target area. Now we need to go sensor select forward. You can see we're in IR mode again. And now we're just waiting. Now we should be able to acquire here. Oh, this is my TDC. I really did something and screwed up my slew controls. I'm really going to have to work on that. What's weird is we're close in. We really are. And yet, the Maverick looks so far away. There we go. Gates are closed. Rifle. So sometimes it takes a bit of manipulation. Again, it's not typically that hard. It's just because I, I have to play with my slew axis again. They're, uh, they're pretty messed up right now. And we should have an impact pretty quick. It's going to happen right as we pass the window frame. Boom! There's our shack. All right, and so the last method that I'm going to walk through, walk through with you guys is using the Maverick with the targeting pod. So let's go ahead and reset the aircraft. I'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys, so we are back. Sorry for everything looking so dark here. I'm not quite sure what that's about. It just happened. And, like, it doesn't... I don't have enough clouds for it to be an issue. I'm not sure what's going on here. But we'll just keep going. It's pretty simple. So, again, we're going to go to air-to-ground mode. Master arm. Find our stores page. IRMV. Set our fuse. Set instant. Make sure we have it ready and not a standby. That lets us know that we're ready to engage the target. Okay, then we're going to come over here. And let's find our teapod. Make sure it comes out of standby. Again, it may have to warm up, so make sure you guys do that. All right. Now, what we can also do to save ourselves some time here, you can see we get a teapod indication right up here. So we can either manually slew it. Now, notice right now it says TV. In order to take control of the targeting pod, I need to double tap the sensor select button. So sensor select down. We're going to tap it twice. One, two. Oh, there it goes. Didn't like my controls at first. All right, and so now we can see t targeting pod designate. We can see we're in plow mode, snow plow, and we can see the targeting pod with its laser code. All right. Now, all we need to do here, what we can do quickly, is we can come back over to our EHSD. You can see we have waypoint three selected. That is our um, practice area that's out there that we've been using. We're going to come over here, we're going to hit designate, okay? And we should now have, as you can see, the targeting pod should be looking at our target location. And it kind of is, you can sort of see it, there's the X of the runway. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. And there is our target area. Now we're in a wide field of view, we can come down and narrow. And let's go ahead and go into the flare mode. Oops. There we go. Anyway, you guys get to the gist. So let's go ahead and slew our TGP over to a target. Okay. Oh. Come on, baby. Let's zoom in a bit more. Let's really get it in there. All right, so there's our target for today. All right, now you don't have to be perfect. Okay, that's what we're looking for. And then again, coming back over here to the stores page, we have our IR maps. Let's go ahead and unpause. So we found our target with our TGP. Oh, you know what drives me crazy? Let's... I always forget to turn this thing off. Don't get me wrong, RWR is amazing. I just, I hate using it when I don't have to. 
All right, so at this point, we're 30 miles out, so let's go ahead and accelerate time a bit. We know that we're not going to get a lock from the Maverick at that range. I got 10 miles to target. No uncage the Maverick. And we can hit our Maverick field of view button. You're supposed to be able to hit the nose wheel steering dis uh, designate button to change your field of view, but I never find that it works. It always just undesignates my target. So I don't know if there's something I'm missing, which is possible. Absolutely possible. Alright, so our Maverick is now on, or our TGP is on target, so again, Hitting sensor select forward, you can see now we're switched to the IR MAV. And now we're just waiting for a lock. Oh, had it. There we go. Gates closed. Rifle. Now we can watch the magic on the TGP. Now we're going to get an up close view of that, so let's zoom out a bit. Oops. Oh, boy, that got bright, didn't it? Once the fire flames out, like what we can do to get rid of the green, go back into CCD or TV mode, and let's tap our undesignate button and start again. So we'll do one more pass. Let's go ahead and extend out a bit. I'm just going to accelerate time now that I don't have any more Bob Ross stories. And let's bring her around. I'm going to go ahead and use some viffing. Viffing is using the nozzles. When you're in a turn, you can point the nozzles back and it'll help bring the nose of the aircraft around much, much faster. Alright, just make sure you put them back where they need to go before it's too late. Alright, so again, just like before, very gently get our TGP in the same area. Oh, make sure you hit the sensor select down button twice. Until you see teapot. There, now we've got control. And there's our new target area. We're going to go for this guy in the front. If I can get my TGP lock up on him. Like I said, I need to adjust my slew controls really bad. Alright, so we're coming in low. Again, cage uncaged to get our Maverick screen. Sensor select forward to make sure we're on the IR uh, setting so we can control the Maverick. Everything looks very far away, which is very odd, again, because of how close we are. I'm going to try tapping that field of view button. There we go. Well, no, it didn't really do much, did it? Alright, now we're just waiting for those gates to close. Oh, there we go. And rifle. Now, it is not locked on the target that we had initially selected, but we'll definitely get one. I think we got like the third one back. And again, I'm showing you guys this in a rush. When you're in your combat scenario, hopefully you guys take more time than I am. To make sure you get the target that you want. It does require patience. Oh, no, I did get that one. Cool. Well, that worked out. All right, guys. Well, those are the three methods. And uh, real quick, actually, before I get there, undesignate our target. And uh, from here, you can stand down from your weapon systems and go back home, whatever you need to do. So anyway, those are the three, method, three methods of employing the AGM-65 Golf and Foxtrot. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial series. And uh, remember, hit that like and subscribe if you guys did enjoy it. Helps me out a lot. I appreciate the view. And as always, take care, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.